We begin this evening's broadcast with yet another possible legal hit for the former president. Sources told ABC News his former chief of staff, who we have talked about a lot over the last two years, Mark Meadows, has been granted immunity from special counsel Jack Smith in exchange for his testimony before a federal grand jury. ABC reporting, quote, the sources said Meadows informed Smith's team that he repeatedly told Trump in the weeks after the 2020 presidential election that the allegations of significant voting fraud coming to them were baseless. NBC News has not independently confirmed this report. Here's what the former lead investigator for the January 6th committee had to say about all of this. If it's true, it is the most significant evidentiary development in the entire investigation. There's really no one who was closer to the former president in the days between the election and the, his reluctant release of the White House than Mark Meadows. Meadows' lawyer says he, quote, told ABC that their story was largely inaccurate, but there were also huge developments in the former president's other cases today, both criminal and civil. My colleague Laura Jarrett has all the details on those. For weeks, attorney Jenna Ellis fiercely defended then-President Trump as he falsely claimed the 2020 election was rigged. Today, she sobbed as she told the judge she was wrong. If I knew then what I know now, I would have declined to represent Donald Trump in these post-election challenges. Ellis in a Georgia courtroom pleading guilty to a felony for helping fuel lies about thousands of dead people casting votes in 2020. I failed to do my due diligence. Smiling for her mugshot just two months ago, now the fourth co-defendant to flip in Fulton County's sprawling election interference case against the former president and more than a dozen others. Mr. Trump has pleaded not guilty, arguing he's being targeted by Democratic prosecutors because he's the Republican frontrunner. He was back in a Manhattan courtroom today, facing the state's star witness, his former fixer turned foe, Michael Cohen. This is about accountability, plain and simple. Raise your right hand. It was Cohen's congressional testimony that jump-started the New York case, where his former boss now stands to lose his namesake company, accused of exaggerating the value of his assets to receive better loan terms in a $250 million civil fraud suit. It was my experience that Mr. Trump inflated his total assets when it served his purposes. Today, Cohen said he was tasked by the former president with boosting Mr. Trump's total assets to achieve a number he arbitrarily elected. While well, Mr. Trump's legal team has argued real estate values are subjective. Outside of court, Mr. Trump took aim at Cohen's credibility, pointing to Cohen's guilty plea for tax fraud and lying to Congress.